It is the accepted doctrine in physical science that a living body is to be interpreted according to what is known of other sections of the physical universe. This is a sound axiom, but it 182 is double-edged. For it carries with it the converse deduction that other sections of the universe are to be interpreted in accordance with what we know of the human body. It is also a sound rule that all interpretation should be based upon a mere causa. Now the original reliance upon the gray stone has been shown by modern physics to be due to a misapprehension of a complex situation, but we have direct knowledge of the relationship of our central intelligence to our bodily feelings. According to this interpretation, thus, human body is to be conceived as a complex amplifier to use the language of the technology of electromagnetism. The various actual entities, which compose the body, are so coordinated that the experiences of any part of the body are transmitted to one or more central occasions to the inherited with enhancements accruing upon the way, are finally added by reason of the final integration. The enduring personality is the historic root of living occasions which are severally dominant in the body at successive instants. The human body is thus achieving on a scale of concentrated efficiency a type of social organization, which with every gradation of efficiency constitutes the orderliness whereby a cosmic epic shelters in itself intensity of satisfaction. The true aboriginal character of direct perception is inherited. What is inherited is feeling tone with evidence of its origin, in other words, in the higher grades of perception based feeling tone differentiates itself into various types of sensibles of touch, sight, smell, etc. each transmuted into a definite prehension of total contemporary nexus by the final recipient. Section B. In principle, the animal body is only the more highly organized and immediate part of the general environment for its dominant actual occasion, which is the ultimate by 83 percipient. But the transition from without to within the body marks the passage from lower to higher grades of actual occasions. The higher the grade, the more vigorous and the more. The original is the enhancement from the supplementary phase. Pure Recept. 120. Discussions and Applications. Activity and transmission give it place to the trigger action of life whereby there is release of energy in novel forms. Thus the transmitted datum acquires sensa enhanced in relevance or even changed in character by the passage from a low-grade external world into the intimacy of the human body. The datum transmitted from the stone becomes the touch feeling in the hand, but it preserves the vector teracted of its origin from the stone. The touch feeling in the hand with this vector origin from the stone is transmitted to the percipient in the brain. Thus the Tina 1 perception is the perception of the stone through the touch in the hand. Eerie this perception the stone is vague and faintly relevant in comparison with the hand. But, however dim, it is there. In the transmission of inheritance from a to B, to C, to D, A is a
some of the line, A and C for instance, may stand out P84 with distinctness by reason of some peculiar feat of original supplementation which retains its undimmed importance in subsequent transmission. Other members of the chain may sink into oblivion. For example, in touch there is a reference to the stone in contact with the hand, and a reference to the hand, but in normal, healthy, bodily operations the chain of occasions along the arm sinks into the background, almost into complete oblivion. Thus M, which has some analytic consciousness of its datum, is conscious of the feeling in its hand as the hand touches the stone. According to this account, perception in its primary form is consciousness of the causal efficacy of the external world by reason of which the percipient is a compressant from a definitely constituted datum. The vector character of the datum is this causal efficacy. Thus perception, in this primary sense, is perception of the settled world in the past is constituted by its feeling tone and as efficacious by reason of those feeling tones. Perception, in this sense of the term, will be called perception in the mode of causal efficacy. Memory is an example of perception in this mode. For memory is perception relating to the data from some historic group of ultimate percipient subjects MI, M2, MG, etc.
symbolic reference is so habitual in human experience that great care is required to distinguish the two modes. In order to find O, 5, 4 also CF, T subsequent discussions in parts 3 and IV. CF, my barber page lectures, symbolism, its meaning and effect, delivered at the University of Virginia, April, 1927, New York, Macmillan, 1927, Cambridge University Press, 1928. Plus another discussion of this question is there undertaken, with other illustrations. P.S. Also Professor Norman Kemp Smith's Philegomena to an Idealist Theory of Knowledge, Macmillan, 1924. 122. Discussions and Applications. Bias examples of the pure mode of causal efficacy we must have recourse to the viscera and to memory, and to find examples of the pure mode of presentational immediacy must have recourse to so-called delusive perception. For example, the image of a gray stone as seen in a mirror illustrates the space behind the mirror. The visual delusions arising from some delirium, or some imaginative excitement, illustrate surrounding spatial regions. Analogously for the double vision due to maladjustment of the eyes, the sight at night, of the stars and nebulae and Milky Way, illustrates vague regions of the contemporary sky, the feelings in amputated limbs illustrate spaces beyond the actual body, a bodily pain, referred to some part not the cause of the disorder, illustrates the painful region though not the pain giving region. All these are perfectly good examples of the pure mode of presentational immediacy. The epithet, delusive, which fits many, if not all, of these examples of presentational immediacy, is evidence that the mediating eternal object is not to be ascribed to the donation of the perceived region. It must have acquired its ingression in this mode from one of the originated phases of the percipient occasion. To this extent, the philosophy of organism is in agreement with the 17th century doctrine of primary and secondary qualities, the mediating eternal object being, in this mode of ingression, a secondary quality. But in the philosophy of organism the doctrine does not have the consequences which follow in the earlier philosophies. The account of perception in the pure mode of presentational immediacy, which has just been given, agrees absolutely with Descartes' doctrine of perception in general, so far as can be judged from his argument which presuppose perception, and putting aside a few detached, 187 passages wherein he comes near to the doctrine of objectification, and near to Locke's second doctrine of ideas determined to particular existence. Anyhow, his conclusion immediately follows that, in perception, thus described, all that is perceived is that the object has extension and is implicated in a complex of extensive relatedness with the animal body of the percipient. Part of the difficulties of Cartesian philosophy, and of any philosophy which accepts this account as a complete account of perception, is to explain how we know more than this meager fact about the world although our only avenue of direct knowledge limits us to this barren residium. Also, if this be all that we perceive about the physical world, we have no basis for ascribing the origination of the mediating sensor to any functioning of the human body. We are thus driven to the Cartesian duality of substances, bodies and minds. Perception is to be ascribed to mental functioning in respect to the barren extensive universe. We 
we have already done violence to our immediate conviction by thus thrusting the human body out of the story. For, as Hume himself declares, we know that we see by our eyes, and taste by our palates. But when we have gone so far, it is inevitable to take a further step, and to discard our other conviction that we are perceiving a world of actual organisms and environment. 123. Things within which we find ourselves. For a barren, extensive world is not really what we need. We thus reduce perceptions to consciousness of impressions on the mind, consisting of sense of wit, manners, of related to the net. as to the actual atomization of this contemporary, real potentiality. By its limitations it exemplifies the doctrine, already stated above, that the contemporary world happens independently. 